All right, so today we're going to continue writing equations for functions. Um, today we're going to from points. We're going to do power and log equations from two points. And these both have two unknowns, two coefficients, an a and a b. So we will need two points to get two equations. All right, here's our first problem. Uh, we have this graph. What kind of function is this? And if you notice, we have a double set of asymptotes. There's a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote, and that makes this an inverse power model. Um, exponential has just the one horizontal asymptote. Logarithmic has the one vertical asymptote. Inverse power has the double set. Um, and we'll learn later that could also be a rational function. Uh, is this graph concave up, concave down, or neither? It opens, the curve faces up, so this is concave up. And this is a concept that will become more important later on when you're taking calculus. So our last part, the meat of this whole lesson, is use the points to find an equation for the graph. So first we have to start with what is the generic version of a power model. And so we have y equals a times x to the b. So our job is to find the particular a and b that work for these two points. To do that, we're going to create two equations because we have two unknowns. So we need two equations, and we'll use our two points. So our first point is 3, if x is 3, and y is 15. So we have x and y is 15. And if I plug in, I get 15 equals a times x, which is 3, to the b power. I can write a separate equation that's also true by using the other point, which is 8, 2. And so I know that 2 equals a, a, not 8, a times 8 to the b power. Now I have two equations and two unknowns. I would like to combine them. I need to eliminate one of my variables so that I can solve for my other variable. And so the method I'm going to use to get rid of, since a is connected to the 3 to the b and to the 8 to the b by multiplying, is I'm going to divide my equations this time. So, and you can divide them in either order. We're just going to take 15 over 2 has to equal a times 3 to the b over a times 8 to the b. Okay, Because my tops are the same. The 15 and the a times 3 to the b are the same. So if you take the same top, divide by an equivalent bottom, you should get the same ratio. All right, now what happens, so your first step is to plug in my x and my y to get two equations. And then I divide my equations. The next step is I can, the reason why I divide is I want to be able to eliminate one of my variables. And this fraction over here on the right, a divided by a is going to give me 1. And so that's my next step is cancel my a. And now I'm going to rewrite. So I have 15 over 2. And I have 3 to the b and 8 to the b. And I can write that as one fraction, 3 eighths to the b. That's my next step. Rewrite as one fraction to the b power. Because they both have the same power, right? If I gave you this thing now here on the right, and I said simplify, you could distribute the b power into both the 3 and the 8. So you similarly, you can sort of take that power out. Now, I need to solve for b. And that's the tricky part, because b is my exponent. It's not like I'm multiplying times b, and I can undo by dividing, or I'm adding something to b, so I could undo by subtracting. b, Or even I'm taking b to the second power, so I could square root to get my b. b is my power. When the thing we are looking for is the exponent, that's when we use logs. And I could use any base I want, but we are going to prepare you the most for calculus. We're going to use ln. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. You could also use log base 10 of both sides. It doesn't matter which one you use, but mathematicians prefer natural log. So I have ln both sides. These are still equivalent equations. In this case, 
So here we ln or log both sides. The reason I do this is because of the laws of logs. And the laws of logs say that log of a to the x power, or log base a, well, it doesn't actually matter. It could be log of anything. Log base anything of a to the x is x log of a. That is always true. And so it allows me to bring my I think I'm searching for bring my exponent down. So now I have ln of 15 over 2 is b ln of 3 over 8. And everything but b here is a number. So I have ln of 3 eighths. If I do this, if I take the ln of 3 divided by 8, that's just a number. So if I gave you a problem and I said 5b equals 7, for example, if I said that 5b is 7, how do you get b? Divide by 5. Same thing here now. This is just a number. So I'm going to divide both sides by ln of 3 eighths. And so b is equal to ln of 15 halves divided by ln of 3 eighths. And I can get a decimal approximation for this in my calculator. So I'm going to clear. I'm going to do ln of 15 divided by 2, close up my parentheses, divide that by ln of 3 divided by 8. Boom. Now I'm going to take that. That's my b. I'm going to store that in alpha b. I like to store. Now if I want to call that number up later and use it, I have it. So that right there, that's my answer, about negative 2.05. So now I have my b, I need to find my a. To find a, I uh, go back and plug b into one of my original equations. So that I can find a. Okay, and it doesn't matter which original equation you use. I should be able to use either. So if I come back up here, and let's try the top one. I am going to, come on, there we go, clone that. I'm going to pull that down so that I'm going to use that original equation, and it could be either one. And then I'm going to solve for A, because that's what I need. So there's my original equation. I now know what b is equal to, so I'm going to say 15 equals a times 3 to the negative 2.054-ish. Okay. Now again, I want to solve for a, so to undo, I'm going to divide a by 3 to the negative 2.054. That's a number, and if I do it to one side... I have to do it to both sides. So there's my answer for A. A is now 15 over 3 to the negative 2.054. And I can do this again on my calculator. So I'm going to take 15 and divide by 3. Oops, that's not divide by. Yeah. Uh, let's start over. It's going to be faster. Come on. 15 divided by. 3 to the, and here's where I could use my answer button, or I have B in there. I'm going to use my B button, because that's going to give me the exact answer. And there's my A, and I'm now going to store that in alpha A. And again, you don't have to do this part, but I'm going to show you a cool trick, a way to check. So now I know that A is about 143.296. So I'm going to write my equation. Y equals A, 143. 0.296 times x to the b power. And if I want to check this answer, and I want to check it exactly, I will use my a and my b and my y equals. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to type in a x to the b. And now if I look at my table, I get the two points, 3, 15, look at that, and my other point, which I believe was 8, 2, 315 and 82. And that's a big 
check. I've done this one correctly. All right, so now we're going to move on and do a log function. Um, so how can I tell from this table that it's a log function? Well, log functions have the table property of multiply add because it's the inverse of the exponential. Exponentials add in the x, multiply in the y. So logs will add, uh, multiply in the x and add in the y. Right here, if I add 5 and add 5, here I'm doing times 3, times 3, times 3. Okay, so that's my property. So now I want to find a natural log equation. And the keyword here is natural. It tells me I'm looking for an ln. So I want my general form y equals a plus b ln of x. All right. Again, I have two things I need to find. I need to find a and b. So I need to use two points. So we could use our first two points. We have the point 4, 5, and I have the point 12, 10. So if I start with the point 4, 5, my y is 5, a is what I'm looking for, b is what I'm looking for, and x is 4. And our second equation, I can write y is 10, a is what I'm looking for, b is also what I'm looking for, and x is 12. Now, unlike in the power model or the exponential model, I still, I would like to eliminate a, but it's not connected to the part with the b in it by multiplying, it's connected by adding. So instead of dividing my two equations, I am going to add or subtract. I, again, generally like to end up with positive numbers. So I'm going to take my 10 and I'm going to, so I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to subtract my other equation. Okay, so I'm going to subtract. So when I take 10 and I subtract 5, I get 5. When I take a and I subtract a, I get 0. And I'm going to take b ln 2 and I'm going to subtract b ln 4. So now I have an equation that's all of, that has only one variable. My variable is b. Okay. Um, I want to solve for b. I want to get b alone. So what I notice is that this has a b in it, and this has a b in it, and I can factor out my b, ln2 minus ln4. Now that is a number. ln2 minus ln4 is a number. Um, I can do that on my calculator, right, if I want to. I can come over here, and I can say ln of 2 minus ln4. Boom. You should also remember from your combining log properties that I could also write this as ln of 2 divided by 4. That should be the same number. And there it is, the same number. But what, no matter what it is, how I'm going to get b alone in this case is, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to divide 5 by ln of 2 minus ln of 4, or ln of 2 fourths. And so we're going to do that to get our b, and I'm going to take 5 divided by this answer, which is what I found, okay? And there's my, that is my answer for B. Oops, I just noticed there's a mistake. Instead of ln of 2, that should be an ln of 12. So this should be an ln of 12, ln of 12, and that's going to give me ln of 3, actually, ln of 12 over 4 on the bottom. So let's try that again. We're going to take, let's start over, 5, and we're going to divide by ln of 3. And there's my answer. That looks a little bit better. So I'm going to take that answer, and I'm going to store that. Again, I found b. I'm going to put that in alpha b. That's going to replace my old alpha b. So I'm going to put that over here. We're going to actually go right on top of that wrong work that I found before. Okay, so this is the same as ln of 3. You could also divide by ln of 12 minus ln of 4 as long as you put that in your parentheses. So now I have my b. I need to find my a. And again, I'm going to go back to one of my original equations. And again, it doesn't matter which one. So if I do 5 equals a plus b ln 4. So I could put it back in here. 5 equals a plus b 
ln of 4, and now I'm going to solve for a. So again, this part right here is a number. It represents a number. And so a is 5 minus 4.551 ln of 4. And I can do that on my calculator. 5 minus my whatever I got for b, that's my 4.551 ln of 4. And there's my a. I'm going to store that in alpha a. There we go. Now I can write my equation. And my equation is y equals a, negative 1.309 plus b, 4.551 ln of x. There's my equation. Now again, I like to check to make sure I did this correctly. So I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to delete this. I'm going to have a, and I'm going to put plus. Uh, actually, let's just clear this. I'm going to do a plus b ln of x. So what and where am I? I somehow got off track. Let's try this again. y equals a plus b ln of x. And when I look in my table, I should have my two points. There's my point 0.45. And if I keep going, I should find the point 1210. And that is true. So I know that I am correct. So hopefully now you can, you are ready to try your mastery problems and you're on your own.